they've they've been with God. Mm. They've met their higher selves. They've seen themselves with their angel guides. Um, and again, this is just this. That's not the the intention that was set. That's just kind of what happens when we really connect deeply with the breath. Welcome to my podcast, Spiritual Quest, with me, your host, Viveke Garnos, always guided by spirit. I am very excited to share my gift with you and empower you to embrace your gift. So if you define yourself as a spiritual human being, then you'll come to the right place. So prepare yourself now for an amazing journey where your soul will lead the way. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Spiritual Quest podcast. I'm going to start this episode by sharing a channeled message from my book, Awaken to the Power of the Universe, which will set the perfect tone for our conversation with today's guest. Okay, so I'm taking a breath now. The breath, my friend, is a precious gift bestowed upon the soul by the physical body. It allows the soul to be reborn, reinvigorated with life. It is essential to recognize the immense value of each breath, for it breeds life into everything. Through the breath, we experience the beauty that surrounds us. Never underestimate the power carried within your breath. It is an invaluable tool for your journey, a vital catalyst for spiritual awakening. Be aware of your breath. Cherish it as the gift it truly is, bestowed from the human to the soul. Hmm. My guest today is Zachary Hansen, an inspiring leader on a mission to bring hope and clarity to life. He is the co-creator of Fractal Illumination and co-founder of Consciously Awesome. He is here to help us understand who we truly are, providing guidance and clarity to make the most out of life. Through the transformative power of somatic breathwork, spiritual readings, and energy healing, Zachary will help us connect with our sovereign source and ignite our spiritual evolution. It's with great pleasure that I welcome Zachary Hansen, to the Spiritual Quest podcast. Welcome, Sakri. Thank you. Thank you, Vibeke, for having me. I'm so honored to be back again. It's such a pleasure to have you on, Sakri. And I sometimes, is it okay if I call you Zach? Either. Works for me. Okay, Zach's because <laughs> we know each other through a mutual friend. And so for me, you were introduced as Zach. So I don't know <laughs> if I'm, I might just say the wrong name. So I, I just wanted to clarify if it's okay by you that I call you Zach. And I'm so excited for us to dive into breath work today. But before we do that, I would love for the listeners and the audience to get to know you more personally. So why don't we go back to childhood? Would you please share how did you awaken to your gifts and how did you discover breath work? So take us all the way through. Mm. All the way through. Well, let's start with this awakening piece. Um, I, I often I I kind of struggle with this this word because so many people mean different things with this. And for me, I don't ever feel like I've awakened to anything. I've always felt like I've been the same, so to speak. Like uh, my consciousness, my my ability to perceive and how I perceive the ideas might change. But I've had some really incredible experiences that are um, that haven't been permanent. I'll put it that way. But they change. They change um, a perspective of maybe how I look and view at the world. So I actually grew up in a neglectful home with lots of abuse, and um, my mother was. She was bipolar and schizophrenic and many other things, and she was on medicated. And um, she would often find herself with abusive men. But she was doing the best she could because she had kids to take care of, being a single mom. 
So I, I dealt with a very traumatic upbringing, and I grew up young, so to speak, being being uh, having to take responsibility for her and my sister, and um, just having to per, per, be a protector of within the home as well. And so being a person who was very sensitive to this as a child, like I just never could understand why human beings could cause so much pain to each other without seeing that they were causing so much pain and like how, how this affected life itself. So there's a lot of cycles of pain going on uh, all over the place. I don't have a lot of time. I could probably spend a long time talking about my childhood. And so we'll, we'll fast forward. Um, when I, after a point in my life where I really emotionally hit rock bottom, um, it was shortly after this that I found breath work. And through this breath work, I, I was, a, it's, it's called the breath of life. It was a Japanese breath uh, technique. I, I still have the book today. It's one of the books that I keep with me always. Uh, and the had to do a soul of the feet breathing. But basically, um, through this, this modality of breath work, I combined it with meditation, a body scan meditation with the breath work to have this most incredible experience I have ever had in my entire life. And it, and it forever changed me. Um, but it was very esoteric, so to speak. So basically what happened was I was laying down, doing the breath work, just kind of working with my own energy field with the breath, slowing it down as much as I could. And I was not trained in metaphysics. I was not trained into all the under things, the things that I understand now. I just knew breath was helping me a lot. I would take it into work. I would take it into martial arts, into the dojo, into the ring. I just take it everywhere with me as I was walking around. But I had this ball of energy at the base of my spine, just shoot up my spine and it went out the top of my head. And as this happened, I lost control of the breath. I was no longer my mind. I was no longer my body. It was the first time and only time in my life where I've been able to disassociate with the mind and the body. Usually it can be one or the other for me. And so in this, I was in a space where I was communicating with what I would call God, source. And in this communication, I was able to experience the love that has no opposite. And <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. it brings me like there's really no words to describe what this was. And I wasn't associated with a the personality. There was, like I said, there was no mind. There was just this infinite field of love. And there was communication that did happen, though. Um, and it happened outside of my of, of my thinking mind, out of my brain, out of my body. And it was gnosis, direct knowing that um, this love is for all. And there is nothing anyone can do to um, prevent this love from, from, from coming forth or um, not being worthy of this love because it is the, the fabric of existence. So in that moment, when I came back, from there, I actually spent about six months of my life in a state of non-dual consciousness. That was another incredible experience because it lasted so long. And in this state, the mundane was miraculous. It's like every single moment was so magical. And I just had a really hard time focusing on work. <laughs> it was so hard. Um, but of course, as we like to say on earth, all, all good things come to an end. And eventually, even that state didn't last. Um, so that in itself, like, I wouldn't call that an awakening because it didn't change my perception on this reality, right? Like, I don't look at reality different on how things function, um, but I know something different about reality, if that makes sense. Yes, that makes complete sense. So would you say that breath work was that which opened you up for a higher consciousness to to be able to experience that and to embody that within your human self that's yes. that's powerful it was super powerful okay so how so 
Yeah, so how did you find uh, somatic breath work? And what's the difference between the, the different breath works? I don't know if you have knowledge of all the breath work, but yeah, could you share? I, I'm new to breath work as a tool. I, I use my breath sure. a lot, but because it's natural and, and I'm guided as I'm doing my work to breathe a certain way and I'm just allowing that to unfold within me. So it's more organic, I would say. But I would love to hear how we can use breath work for our spiritual awakening. For our spiritual awakening? Oh, great question. Okay, so for me, obviously, I did that on accident. Like it wasn't, I wasn't trying to do that. I was just trying to work with my field, my energy field, and just get into the most relaxed state possible. And the, in, in the most incredible experience of my life happened, right? And so to answer your question about that, there's so many different types of breath work. Breath work is, is ancient as humans. And there's whether, and it doesn't matter what continent we're on, there's so many different techniques um, that I don't know them all for sure. There's some that are more popular um, are becoming more popular now because it's kind of like yoga in the West. It didn't get popular for like 20 or 30 years. And so we're just now getting to the point where breath work is resurfacing and there are um, more psychological and scientific understandings that help us come make. Sci I, I, I've noticed that science will help the mainstream yes. understand the spiritual. So now it's okay when science says it's okay instead of the self-exploration. So I think that's a big difference. So there's so many out there um, because you have box breathing, you have circular rhythmic breathing, you have eight part activation breathing. There's so many different ways to do things to have different effects within the body. Um, somatic breath work. How did I come across that? Well, it was, it was about a year ago, um, roughly, when I had my first experience with somatic breathwork. And a friend of mine, I went to her somatic breathwork class when I was out visiting my family in Kansas. And I noticed how profound it was for all of the participants there. Now, at the time, I didn't have a profound experience for myself, but I got to witness all of the people expressing um, things that they've been holding on to. And so I was like, wow, this is this is powerful. I, I need to, to go about this. So I asked my, started asking my friend about somatic breath work and basically she got me into um, where I needed to be to, to do my own uh, research, so to speak, and all of this kind of stuff. And so that's how I got into somatic breath work. And get, uh, there's, there's a lot here to unpack, but to get to your question, how to, how do we use that for a spiritual awakening? I would have to say um, has to do with intention, right? And I've had a lot of people in my uh, my clients who do breath work with me. They've expressed they've they've been with God, mm. they've met their higher selves, they've seen themselves with their angel guides. Um, and again, this is just this. That's not the the intention that was set. That's just kind of what happens when we really connect deeply with the breath. And there's more to it than just breathing. There's so much more to it than that. Uh, like I mentioned, the science behind this kind of stuff, and a lot of it has to do with our nervous systems, actually. And to me, the nervous system is the cornerstone of our health. It's also the cornerstone of how we connect to spirit and how the soul connects into the body. Um, so when we're, right? And in somatic breath work, the first portion of it is meant to clear out the nervous system. It's meant to allow it to be in such a safe space where it, the defenses turn off. Because most human beings, it's like 70% of human beings are in a chronic state of stress. And what does that mean? That means our nervous systems are in fight or flight mode. And this is chronic stress because of work and emails and bills and insurance and kids and, and the, the world that we live in is so profoundly stressful. So we are constantly bombarded and that's not how we were hundreds of years ago. 
Not to say that there wasn't stress, it just wasn't all the time. People didn't have their cell phones to look at. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. right. We, didn't have <laughs> like we, have, we get to see so many more screens and images than anybody previously in the history of the recorded history of, of humankind. And that adds a lot of stress um, with that. So my clients have the opportunity to clear out or to let the defenses down of the nervous system. And when that starts to happen, mm, mm. Mm, that's the magic. That is the magic of breath work is because that's when you can really start to open up and uh, into higher consciousness. Right, because not everything the defenses aren't firing off. The body can go, oh, I can relax now. Right, I don't have to carry all this stuff anymore. And so there's a discharge that can can potentially happen physically, and that physical discharge um, could look like an emotional discharge. It could look like shaking or screaming or crying or laughing, whatever it is. It's just the body's the, the animal part of us. The body it just needs to discharge energy. That's what it's designed to do. If you watch little kids have a tantrum, they're really awesome at this until the, we teach them not to be. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Did, and so really unfortunately, we don't have that space for them anymore to actually. And we don't play outside as we did as children. I remember jumping from one tree to another and running around playing football, doing all that. Who does this anymore? They're in front of their... So yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So I have a question for you regarding um, uh, breath work in general, I would say. Would you um, enlighten us when it comes to how this, like you said, the nervous system relaxes as we are breathing? How does that affect the energy flow of the body? Would you please go into that so that we can have an understanding of how to find that stillness, which is so important for us to really tune into our higher self and become channels and all that a lot of people are interested in knowing. So would you share how this affects the energy flow of the body? Sure. Um, first, I got to say too, our nervous systems are designed to fluctuate. They're designed to be in a sympathetic state and a parasympathetic. So what does that mean? That means fight or flight or relaxation. We need to be able to fluctuate. And to me, in my experience, I can find spirit in both. That's right. so, beautiful. That makes me think, well, me, I want to think it loud with you because I want your opinion on this. So when you're saying that, I'm always experiencing being the observer of whatever goes on within myself, like the the duality of the human experience. So the light and the dark. And it's the within the contrast that my breath reacts, right? It's whether, you know, I'm joyful and I'm relaxed or if I'm in a flight and flee or am I feeling emotions that are triggering me somehow, right? And so within that, I can, I'm always the observer of the emotions rising within and it already affects my breath. And so my breath is my first signal sometimes for me to acknowledge that there's a shift in me that I need to be aware of. So I don't know what my question is, but I would love to have you um, dive in and, and kind of dissect that for me. And, you know, is that part of doing breath work and, and as part of what you were sharing right now? Um, that was just... So that's my observation and my experience of how I have um, had many spiritual um, experiences. So we talked about getting into the restful state, the parasympathetic state, the, the rejuvenation state, where we can get in a really deep, deep, deep relaxation. And this is oftentimes when we can allow for love to come through and feel it in every cell of the body or gratitude to come through, right? These, these highly elevated emotions that we can feel on a cellular level, right? And so this is it's almost like this when, when the relaxation comes in, and I don't mean relaxation like let's go to the spa and just have a nice massage, right? That's good. This is a different level of relaxation, 
right? Because it's, it has to do with the psyche, the emotions, the body. It's, it's the whole spectrum, including our energy fields, right? So we can get super deep into this. It's not like a cognitive relaxation. It's like a, a total being relaxation. And that's when, when we have those moments of relaxation, that's when we, we, we find ourselves having the most creative ideas. We solve problems. We have spiritual experiences. Like this is where we can tap into the unknown as we kind of put the analytics away from our mind, right? And from our body and how we're feeling. And so that allows the unknown to come through and, and manifest in the body. So that's in the, the relaxation of the nervous system when it relaxes and we can get into this deep seated relaxation. I've had people come to me who are elders and say, I've never been in a deeper relaxed state than I was in the somatic breath work uh, event. And I was like, I mean, it's just incredible what people are coming to me and telling me. Now on the other end of the spectrum, there has been a lot of physical practices actually uh, over time, over over the span of time where, where people would, anytime we kind of get into sensory deprivation or overstimulation, those, those are also times where spirit can come into the body, right? So now we're talking about sympathetic states. And for me, like if I go into like a really like heavy workout, like whether it's in the gym lifting weights or maybe I'm working um, kickboxing or things like this and I'm going really heavy, still being the observer, still getting into that state. I might not be in a relaxed state in the body, but the, the mind starts to give up control, right? And so it's a different way of getting into the state of being. There, the, um, in Japan, there, there was some, I've, so I'm a martial artist and I've studied this kind of stuff. And one of the ways that they used to get people into um, Satori or um, like enlightenment, that kind of thing, is they would have one man, and I, it's been years since I've, I've researched this, so don't like quote me on the exacts. This is the, the concept, right? They would have one man, they would do sort of, sort of like sword fighting um, practices, like um, just fake, fake sword fighting. And what they would do is they would have him stand there and defend himself over like 10 men. And they'd all be fresh. They'd come in fresh, right? So each opponent he has is fresh and he's getting weaker and tireder. And they do this progression for like a month straight. And so he's constantly getting beat up and 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 beat up until he cannot, um, until the mind kind of breaks and what's left is the spirit holding the sword, right? So it's this, in shamanism, they bury people under the ground for 24 hours. Like there's, there's other ways besides deep relaxation to actually get into these, they're much, I'm not saying I recommend them, they're very <laughs> rigorous. They're hard and they might not work, but these trials and like uh, sweat lodges and all these things that like indigenous people used to do to induce these states into elevated consciousness and to get these shift, uh, these states of higher consciousness to shift into people, they were, they, to us in the modern world, they might not look very nice because sometimes people don't make it and they die. Mm. Right. Okay, so there, so there are. Yeah, I have a question because I want to ask you this because a couple of years ago, well, it's quite, it's actually many years ago now, a couple of years ago, um, I had an experience. I was doing a lot of channeling at the time and we had a group and I've been working with that group for a while and I was laying on the floor. We were, I was receiving healing energy. And so as, and that was after I had channeled and because my physical body at the time was tired. And I remember in one moment, I stopped breathing. And I didn't breathe for a long time. So the people around me started to, is she not going to breathe? What's going on? Like for a long time, I was fine. I was away. But I felt somebody else breathe for me. I know it sounds weird, but I want your take on that. Because I did not breathe for a long time. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a beautiful state to get into, actually. If you've ever heard about some of like the, the yogis or monks that would like go into a cave and slow their heart down as much as possible and just be in this really 
low level state where they're almost appearing dead. Like this is a thing that people yes. can do when you have control of your body. And that is similar to what happened to me when I lost control of the breath. The there's, there's meditations to work on. You start with the breath, you start minding your breath. You can control your breath, right? That's a way to get into your nervous system. But there's a the point in which you stop controlling your breath and allow your body to do what it does anyway without you thinking about it. That's when we get into these transcendent states is when we give in to surrender, right? We surrender into this because our, our, our bodies are miraculous and they know what to do, right? And that's what the IQ and somatic breath work is all about is honoring the innate intelligence of the body. Yes. And I, I look at I look at it as, you know, the introduction I had where I read from my um, my book is, you know, the order has always told me that the breath or they describe it for me, for me to understand as I'm channeling this, that as my breath is pulling in every aspect of what my soul is or has, you know, made available through my abilities, through all that I am, can be accessed through the breath. Like all, I can pull it into my beingness as a human and experience the power of that by breathing and allowing that breath, not only just to breathe for life, but to breathe in unison with all life somehow. And so I, I just want to, because what we're talking about, this is pretty deep for people who just, oh, you're breathing. You know, we know that the breath can, is good for us, right? We need to breathe or, right. you know, we're faint, <laughs> you know, so we need to, right. we need to breathe. But this is like really powerful stuff that we're talking about. So what is my question? I guess I'm trying to have you help me explore what the order or the higher consciousness is sharing about the breath that will allow us as humans to activate all our unique vibrational frequency through a simple breathing technique or simple i'm just using the word simple but a breathing technique and you have this experience and you've had your own personal experiences so when people are sitting now listening to us thinking well, hey, I want to do this. This is a great way. I mean, I have to read anyway. So let's try this out. What should I do? What is your best tips for using breathwork to actually embody that vibration of the soul? I love that you're bringing up embodiment. That has been the, for me, that's kind of a theme that has been showing up in the media that I've been consuming. Um, and the like somatic breath work to me this is, is is about embodiment it's not really taught that way necessarily but it's um it's a side effect of the breath work is embodiment and so if you're if you're sitting home right now listening to this how can you start with breath work so for me it's just a matter of um how about this i will I will share the uh, sole of the feet breathing that I learned uh, in an abbreviated form. It's not complicated. That's the great thing about breath work. Um, the stuff that's been powerful for me, it's not complicated stuff. Um, it can get really over complicated in my opinion with some of the breath work that's out there for different things. And I don't think that's necessary for everybody. Um, but if you just imagine yourself getting into a, a comfortable space, just like you would want to meditate, right? And one thing that I have been able to do with breath work, and I don't know if other people can do this. Maybe I'll ask you if you can do this. So when I put my attention on the breath, have you ever had a time when you've got like hair stand up on your forearm or in the back of your neck when spirits are around, right? Oh, um, all the time. When, <laughs> Okay, so now you know the feeling. For me, I can consciously produce that feeling in I my body. I just did it. Right? With yes. my breath. <laughs> yes, I just did it with my breath. <laughs> right? Conscious so, breathing. Right? Conscious breathing. And so for me, 
this is this is just my own part my my personal exploration about what i'm going to share but for me what i i can do is this deep breathing but every time i breathe i focus on charging the energy in my body so like if the hairs are coming up on my arms probably can't see that they are but i'm trying to bring in that electricity with my breath and then i just take that electricity and i feel I just take my mind, I close, close my eyes and, and take my mind, and I just start to feel around my body. Maybe I start with like an inch around my body and then two inches and three inches, just feel into the space. But as I'm breathing and pulling in this electricity all the way through my body, in through the feet, all the way up into the head and shoulders and that kind of thing. And then I pour this energy into the field and I just repeat this process over and over and over and charge up as much as I can while at the same time relaxing as deeply as I can. So that's kind of like what I've never had anybody teach me that. That's just kind of what I naturally do when I do my breath work. I love so, that you're saying that because that's the natural way for me as well. I've, I've, like I said, I don't know about breath work as a technique or tool specifically or a practice, but I've, I've had to, I've, I trust spirit. I trust my body. I trust that my body knows how to facilitate whatever I do. If I, I couldn't be a channel unless I was trusting in my physical body and my energy that, that right. it will deal with this. And so when you're talking, I can automatically, because I, I breathe so deeply now because I've been doing this for so long that even though I'm talking to you, I can feel my stomach move. I can, you know, I can feel that I'm charging. I can feel, and you know how I feel it? Like you said, with the tingling, I can feel my toes tingling. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> I just yeah. thought that was funny. So, yeah. And I think when you're sharing that, I'm thinking when we show up, like when we, we, if you're ever taking a course on leadership or anything, you know that the way you present yourself, how you stand, how you breathe, it's all about bringing the energy, right? To get everybody lit and to use that power of the breath to synchronize and to lift and to shift, right? And we always, yeah. we just do that automatically. Like I did that simple thing by just saying it and breathing. And now my hair is standing. So I already shifted and lifted the energy. Isn't it wonderful how breath it really is. works when we when we when we just allow it and trust in mm -hmm. ourselves and our abilities to yeah to breathe the way right. we're so yeah. yeah honoring the innate innate intelligence of our body. These bodies are super smart. Yes, they I love that smart. you're saying that because yeah and. That brings me into, um, because you're, you had a really challenging upbringing, as you shortly mentioned, and you discovered breath work through the, your own experience. But knowing now what you can do with your breath, speaking to your younger self going through what you were going through, what is your best, what would you say to that younger part of you? When it comes to, should I say, I'm looking for a word here in English. Um, let me see if I can find another word. What would you say to help the situation through breath for yourself as a younger child? Hmm. It's a very good question. I've never thought about this before, but I, through, through the breath, um, I would, I would have to say to my younger self is to continue to breathe deeply into what you already know, because what you already know is true. What you already know, what you already see, what you are experiencing is true. You are holding the truth. You're holding the light. You're holding the love. You know better, even though these adults do not. Don't let, don't give your power away to them. Oh, I love that. Breathe that power into every cell of your body. Breathe it into your heart. Breathe it into your mind. And just be, beam, 
be that light that you know you are. Wow, that was powerful. Thank you for that. And I want people to understand how how powerful they are. And by using breath work, you can actually feel it. It kind mm. of brings it into reality. Like it, 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 you know, that's, you know, I never th looked at this. I love this conversation because I never took the time to look at breath work and like, oh, what does really mean? How do, but, but yeah, this is, this is really great, great tips. And yeah. Okay. So let's see now. There's a lot of, we, we have to solve some problems of the world now, Zachary. Hope you're open for that. So let's see. Right, you're going to bring, yeah, you're going to bring this breath work into the schools. What would be the first tips you would give to the teachers and the adults, you know, meeting these young, younger kids? Um, my, my first advice would be to tell the adults they're, they're the ones in control, not the children. And the children are responding to the adults and the, the children are watching the adults. Children are mimicking you and what you are doing, how you are behaving. They're mimicking all of the um, subconscious behaviors and, and disempowering belief systems that you carry around in your head and you carry around in your body. So if you want these children to um, have a better experience in school and in their lives, then take control of your own nervous system, own your, your belief systems, how they don't help you, own your, own your emotional wounds, because the trauma, the wounds that we carry, and we all carry them, right? It's just part of our, our human journey. They, they, the trauma can turn, turn into the womb of healing, yeah. right? And so when it comes to working with children, the best way to help them is to regulate your own nervous system because our nervous systems are communicating with, with each other. Our, me and you right now, our nervous systems are talking, right? And one of the first questions, well, the, the, the first thing our nervous system is designed to do is to keep us safe. And it's, it's communicate really. Like communication is what it does. And the first question it's going to ask is, am I safe, right? And so these kids, not, they don't need to, they don't need to understand English to understand what's happening because this is how humans communicate. Right. And so when we're, when our nervous system is out of regulation, when we're, we're in stress mode, when we're in flight or fright, we're, we are really in a contracted state. Our minds actually don't work properly. And in fact, they will, the neurons in our brains will actually wire patterns of stress instead of health. And when that happens, our DNA kicks in and, and just basically the whole, I'm not going to get into all of it, but the whole system down regulates into disease, right? And so when working with kids, the best things we can do is work with our own nervous system to be able to fluctuate, to be able to choose to relax or to get into a heightened state where we can take on stress. Because when, when we're in a centered place within our nervous system when we feel safe in our own skin everybody around us can feel that so true right and so kids right these kids will be coming into the classrooms from dysregulated parents who don't have this knowledge this is this is human being 101 this is like the simplest stuff if we could if we could let the world know that our nervous system is the cornerstone of health and communication and that everybody can regulate their own nervous system, right? And, and to harmonize the brain with the heart and create coherence, that, that has a ripple effect against everybody we're around, including our beloved children who we want the best for, right? So working with teachers, right? And parents, get regulated clear out the stuff you don't need to carry anymore that's that's blocking you. It's the thing with um, with a lot of this um, psychology that we have now, talk psychology, it's all based from the mind all the way down to the emotions, down to the body. So there's a lot of working with the story. And our the way we developed is an animal, the limbic system in the brain, 
not the prefrontal cortex, but the limbic system back here, that developed first before we even got the storyteller portion. We, we try to bypass that and we can't, right? And so when we're working with like talk therapy, a lot of people can get stuck in the story and not get very far. <laughs> and the reason is, and there's a book out here, there's lots of material about here now, but the body keeps the score. The nervous system has the defenses up. And until the, the physical body can let them down, the story is going to be really hard to change. So the best things we can do for ourselves is let our, our body, not the mind, not the storyteller, not even the emotional center, but the instinctual center underneath the emotions, that needs to discharge energy. And when that happens, now we can have this cathartic experience and working with the story becomes so much easier. Sometimes you don't even need to work with the story because we felt the pain. And when we feel it, we heal it. Then we can start to reprogram our neurons with the story port, the, the mindset stuff, the talk therapy becomes so much easier because our body's not working against us. So coming all back to the classroom, right? It's about healing yourself, coming back into the, the, the wholest version of yourself possible. And somatic breath work is one of the best, most profound ways I've, I've had the, uh, the opportunity and the fortune of coming across for myself. I've, I've healed a lot of um, stuff in my own body and mind and, and things like that. And I've done a lot of foiling work. I've, I've been on this journey for like 20 something years now. So all this is, it's, it's powerful stuff. So I hope I answered your question. Yes, you Get did. Ready. Learn about your breath, learn about your nervous system. It's not complicated stuff. Regulate yourself so then you can help co-regulate those who are dysregulated. Mm. Yes. Who knew that the power of the breath is what's going to shift humanity into a new place, right? <laughs> Just by breathing, like really breathing and breathing forward to the enlightenment of our own journeys, if you wish. It's going to be a powerful time for humanity coming now that we are realizing are more open to this kind of work. And, and I hope, I don't know how it is in the States, but I don't hear, I know breath work has been around for a long time, like you said, but it's now the, you know, the last couple of years is where I've started noticing this being more or come becoming more aware of it because it's more available and it's talked about, but it's still not, something you see in schools or at work or we do a lot of things in Norway for employees like I know companies where my husband works as well they have a fitness room and sometimes they have like a massage therapist coming so for the neck and all that so they can go and get treatments but it's never talked about the breath I don't know how is it in the states is it still not in the schools and or how no, 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 no. This, this is early. So um, the the founders of somatic breath uh, work, somatic release, um, basically, they, they kind of have the foresight. This blew up really fast, this particular modality. it's There's a lot of different breath works out there. There's even other somatic breath works out there. But this is its own thing. And that's why we have the, sm the somatic with the IQ is because it's to represent the honoring the innate intelligence of the body. And they also recognize that this is starting to turn into a movement. It's not just breath work. Um, they've probably created about a thousand facilitators in just a handful of years to go through this. And they recognize that this is turning into a movement and it's turning into the movement because so many people are having profound releases with clearing trauma and having spiritual experiences and there's also, again, the science to back it up. So they said, you know what? This is probably where yoga was at 30 years ago where nobody knows about it. Now yoga is everywhere, yes. right? So they're, they understand that they're like this, this, this modality is kind of in the ground floor in the Western world, air quotes, Western world, right over here. So it's, it is going to become more popular because we are more stressed than ever. We have more anxiety than ever our entire popular, like the whole world is traumatized at some level um, because of just our social 
economical structures that are here that we all have to deal with, not including technology that's coming around. So it is more important now than ever that we have the breath and we have these uh, safe spaces to be able to have these releases and actually talk about this stuff um, that doesn't, even in spiritual circles, like I've been in a lot of them and rage isn't something that comes up and anger isn't really something that comes up. Like people can get angry, but this isn't like, it's more talked about than expressed physically, right? And, the, and it's not about the emotions. It's not about the, the story. It's about our body literally needs to move this energy in a particular way. And that looks different to everybody, right? And so now we're creating these safe spaces. And so the word is just kind of now getting out. So wait 10 years, right? And it might be a lot more popular. I've actually, um, here in my local area, I've, I've started to work with a, a teacher, a retired teacher of my, she's a friend of mine, about having a, a, what I call creating coherency in the classroom as a program for teachers, right? And that kind of stuff. So we'll see where it goes. It, it takes a while for this stuff to penetrate because all the red tape that we have in our social structures. So true. So true. But I also um, think that, or think it or think, I don't know if I think it or if I actually feel um, the energy of the shift that has, that is going on and that is shifting how we are embodying our own energy and we're awakening more up to higher consciousness and as we are doing this, the breath becomes so much more important. And so mm -hmm. we are finding ourselves having to learn about breath and how to breathe in new ways, just because we are moving so rapidly now compared to, you know, the, the, the directory that we've had. It's things goes faster and faster. And I think as part of the shift, this is how we can embody more of our own unique vibration and frequency and we have to make space and room for that and the breath is what will help us do that and so i think it's just a natural unfolding right now uh, this is what we need and this that is why we are sensing that this is something that humanity is ready for and because of the shift and that we are being gifted at this time through everyone through you zachary and everyone else who's using that technique or uh, modality, if you wish, to help us, to help us journey and to awaken and to continue to ascend into higher states of consciousness. So I think it's perfect timing. <laughs> well said. I couldn't have said it better myself. I, I agree 100%. <laughs> Well, wow. This has been wonderful, Sacre. I so appreciate you coming on and sharing your gift with us. But before we leave today, um, is there any final words that you have for our audience? Anything? I know you're also a psychic reader and you're energy healers, so whatever you have to share with the audience that will help them through this shift and reawaken to their innate power would appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yep, I uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the shift. We just we just had a fractal illumination, which Sheila and I talked about uh, previously, and it was so powerful. Probably the most powerful because the energies on the planet are they're so so intense right now. And for me, my projection or understanding is that we're gonna start to hit the peak. We haven't even hit it yet. No, I know. <laughs> In the next six to seven years, maybe 10, right? It's really hard to, to gauge potentials of intensity. Like we're not even close to being where it's at. And so I, I would just have to say that um, to, to everybody who is listening, the shift is real. It's happening. Nobody is getting left behind. The creator God, source energy, the love that has no opposite is for all human beings. And the shift is an opportunity for every single human being on this planet. No ifs, ands, or buts. Doesn't matter about your belief systems. Love doesn't care, <laughs> right? And so just um, get into your breath, get into your body, get into your heart, carry your heart, in your mind together, not one over the other, but together and walk in that way. And if 
you know, there are so many beautiful healers out there now, Vebeke, you being one of them, right? You channel for people. You don't have to do this alone. There are, whether it's me, Vebeke, Sheila, wh whoever it is that you resonate with the most, there are so many people ready to ready to help you in your journey. So you don't have to go it alone. You're not going crazy. There's some crazy things that might, might be experiencing internally and externally and a lot of chaos, but it's just all part of the process and you're gonna make it. And you don't have to do it alone to so reach out. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your gift with us. Zachary, I, I so appreciate you and Sheila. And yes, it's just a beautiful, beautiful co-creation process that we're all attending to. And I love it. So thank you so much. And I want to say to everyone listening thank you for or watching, so much. if you want to learn more about Zachary and his work, then you'll find his contact information in the episode description. And now, if you're ready to go even deeper and explore your soul's journey as a multidimensional being and ascend into higher realms of consciousness where you allow the guidance of spirit, then I invite you to join the Spiritual Quest Treasure Chest. Inside, you'll discover masterclasses that awaken you to your innate power, along with tools like meditations, self-hypnosis, activations, channelings, and workbooks to help you elevate your vibrations and embrace your unique frequency. And you'll also gain access to all seasons of the Spiritual Quest podcast, all in one sacred place. So I invite you to embrace the unexpected treasures that spirits leads your way. And let's journey together and elevate your spiritual quest to new heights by opening the treasure chest by clicking the link in the episode description. And one last thing, if you find these conversations valuable, then please leave a review in your favorite podcast app. That would truly make my heart bubble with joy. Thank you so much for joining us. Sending you much love and light from me, your host, Vibeke Garnos, always guided by spirit. Bye now.